Hello everyone, in this video we're going to talk about using the Raspberry Pi as a data logger to measure things in the outside world. Okay, what you'll need to follow along with us is first of all you need a basic understanding of the uh, fundamental electronic components. Uh, you need a Raspberry Pi of course, uh, and in this example we're going to use the SPASDEC 885592 snack board, and that's going to be used to uh, measure uh, some things. Uh, in this particular case we're going to be measuring the uh, voltage uh, across a potentiometer. Uh, you're also going to need a sorted set of uh, jumper wires. Uh, LEDs are, are optional, um, but we'll be using those for a visual feedback here. Uh, 220 ohm uh, resistor is also optional. This goes in the same circuit with the LED. Uh, you need a decoupling capacitor. Uh, not, not strictly required, but it's a good idea uh, to, to put that on the power going to the 85592 snack board. Uh, we need a solderless breadboard to put the, some of these components in, and then a, a multimeter oscilloscope is optional if you need to do any troubleshooting. Okay, just a little bit about the 85592 uh, snack board. It uh, uh, has eight configurable I.O. pins. Uh, they can be configured as analog in, analog out, digital in, or digital out. We're going to be using the uh, both the analog in and analog out and the digital in in this particular example. Uh, we're going, it has a uh, serial peripheral interface uh, that's capable of up to 20 megahertz. We're going to be using uh, 15 megahertz in this example. Uh, you can have a separate logic for the uh, voltage reference and the uh, or se separate voltage levels for the logic and the voltage reference, and that's useful for the Pi because the Pi uses 3.3 uh, volts for its logic, uh, but it has 5 volts available, so uh, it, it can work well with uh, sensors and things that like to have 0 to 5 volt uh, uh, signals. Uh, also, uh, I have uh, some uh, sample C code available for that, and uh, that helps you get started. It basically breaks down all the interfacing down to six basic functions, uh, and, you can, and it is available on my website there at spastic.com. Uh, this is how we're going to wire up the hardware. Um, just uh, uh, essentially, we're going to be using a serial peripheral interface, of course, and uh, we're going to use 5 volts to power the snack board and to provide uh, a voltage reference for I.O. pins. And then we're going to be using the 3.3 volts to the V-Logic pin, and that's because the serial peripheral interface uses 3.3 volt uh, logic. All right, and uh, in our case, we're also going to put a, a capacitor on that 5 volt signal. Uh, just to kind of smooth out the, the power and reference going to the board. Uh, some of the software you're going to need, in, in, in this case we're going to be using the Raspbian uh, OS. Uh, you also need the BCM2835 library. Uh, that is a uh, prerequisite for the helper code that I have. And uh, I have another video on installing that uh, if you need some help. And then on GitHub I have a, uh, a header and C file uh, there that is kind of a, a in-between uh, output layer of abstraction, if you will, between the BCM2835 and uh, the application code that we're going to be using, uh, and that's available on GitHub. Okay, so the source files that I was just talking about, there's really only six functions that we need to worry about. Uh, there is the 85592 init, and that just uh, sets things up for us. Uh, then we need to set which channel we're connected to, and when I say channel, I mean the serial peripheral interface channel. Uh, Raspberry Pi has two channels, channel 0 and channel 1, so you'll pass a 0 or 1 to that. That's to let, let, uh, let the, everything know that which, which channel the, uh, this uh, snack board is connected to. Uh, and then there's uh, four functions to get or set values. So we got the get analog in, uh, set analog out, get digital in and set digital out. We'll be using three of those in the, this example. Okay, so go, let's go ahead and take a look at the code for the data logging example. All right, here we are in the, in the code. Uh, and what I've done here uh, is I started with the file from the demo one uh, where I demonstrated uh, uh, some of this device for the first time. You can, you can uh, take a look at the video. I think it's called uh, adding, adding Analog I.O. to Raspberry Pi. You can go take a look at that and that's, that's where I started here and I just made changes to it. Um, I have uh, imported uh, directly into this file those uh, the 85592 uh, rpi.h and .c 
uh, as uh, just directly into this file, just to simplify things a little bit. But uh, here we are in the main function. First, first thing we're going to do is we're going to call that a init function for 85592. Uh, then we're going to set the channel. In this case, we're using channel zero. Uh, I'm creating an 8-bit uh, integer uh, for uh, for holding the uh, the button uh, press. Basically, there's a uh, there's going to be a one of the IOs is connected to a button, and uh, we're going to, we need an 8-bit integer to uh, uh, grab that value. And those eight bits actually correspond to the eight pins on the device, but we're only we're only going to be using one of them. Uh, we also have a 16-bit uh, integer that or I'm calling millivolts, and that's what we're going to pass uh, pa pass to the uh, 85992 to either get the analog input or to set the analog output. Uh, and then here is some of the code you added just for this example. Uh, I'm creating a, an integer uh, called milliseconds or MS for milliseconds. So we're going to uh, initially set that to zero. I'm also creating a file pointer, and I have another uh, video on a uh, file I/O, and uh, you can you can look at that one to uh, to, to see how this kind of works in a little bit more detail. Uh, also, getting a timestamp, and we're going to just going to be using that to basically name the file. So if we run this multiple times, we're we're creating a new file, not writing over an old file. And then uh, we're going to uh, actually get the timestamp from the system right here. Uh, then we're going to create the file. So fi we use the file open, and then uh, we're going to use, uh, and then we're, going to, we're passing uh, C this uh, timestamp to it in the form of a string. You could put a string in here if you like, uh, but just remember that every time you run this, it's going to create a file that that name, if it already exists, is going to overwrite it. Uh, so uh, we've created a, a new file because every time we run this, the timestamp is going to be different, um, and uh, and we're, we're then. Uh, setting that to a, a file pointer there. Oh, I guess our, yeah, we're passing a reference to our, our file pointer. Uh, and then uh, we're going to create the first, uh, the, basically the header row of the data file. And in this case, we're going to be creating a CSV file. So it's going to be a, a, a character separated file. In this case, we're going to use a comma. And uh, so we on the header row, we have a time value. And I put the units in there as milliseconds. And then the comma and a signal. Uh, in middle volts, and then I use a new line. Uh, I create basically then returns a new line, and then we're going then we're go we'll continue on there with adding the data. Uh, and then we have a do while loop, and it's a really short do while loop, and this is just going to be uh, grabbing the data and logging the data. So first line here, we're going to go ahead and get the analog input. Uh, so again, this is from that helper file, we're just this, this function, we're going to get analog in and we're passing 7 because our analog input, in this case potentiometer, is attached to uh, IO pin 7 of the 8592. Uh, and then that's going to return a value in millivolts and we're assigning that to millivolts. Then we're going to set an analog out and we have an LED attached to IO pin 6. Uh, and, uh, and a resistor just to limit current. And that's really just used as kind of a visual feedback when we're working with this so that we can see that we are actually changing the value and the, the LED will get brighter or dimmer depending on where we, we put the potentiometer. Uh, and then I'm just basically incrementing that MS uh, variable. I'm using the plus equals uh, operator to add uh, this uh, this value short delay in this case it's a 10 uh, and and we'll talk a little bit more about that in a second uh, and then we're going to log our data so we're going to use the f print f function here uh, pass through the file pointer and then we just have uh, present d, percent d to uh, pass an integer into there and then the comma then a percent u to, is to pass an unsigned uh, integer and then I'm passing through the MS variable, which is our, our milliseconds, and then our millivolts variable, which is millivolts. So we'll have a line that is milliseconds, millivolts, uh, milliseconds, comma, millivolts. And then we create a new line there, and then uh, when this runs again, it'll, it'll write another line. And so we'll be creating a uh, two columns of data uh, separated by commas. Uh, next, we're going to check for button press. Uh, so we're going, to, uh, set, we're going to get digital in, 
and we're looking for IO pin one, um, and, and we're going to assign that to uh, button. So um, we're just seeing if the button is pressed. Uh, and then here's that short delay again, and we're just going to use this from the BCM2835 library to uh, cause a short delay. In this case, we have short delay set to 10 milliseconds. So this is going to run at approximately uh, 100 hertz. Um, so it's going to run pretty fast, and I played around with this a little bit, just taking out the delay, and I found that it's, it's looping, uh, um, it, it, it's, a, it's a few microseconds. So uh the just just using this delay and saying it's 10 milliseconds it's going to be uh, pretty close not going to be exactly 10 milliseconds but close enough for for our case here if you want to get really precise you look at the time uh time dot h and there's uh some some ways there to get actual time stamps and uh, it, that's probably out of the scope of this video though all right and so at the end of our our do while loop we check our button and if the button is pressed, uh, we, uh, I'm sorry, if the, bre uh, uh, if the bre button is not pressed, uh, we'll, uh, we'll uh, loop again. And if the button is pressed, we're going to exit that loop and then we're going to close the file. And that's it. And so after, uh, so what we're going to do here, and I'll switch to the other camera here in a minute. Um, we're going to run this and I'm just going to adjust the potentiometer up and down and then press the button and when I press the button that should end the program and then we'll go check for the file actually let me show you first uh, where the file is going to go and right now I just have this set to go to where I'm running the program from you see this is these are the files I have in here uh, and we're going to see another file with a time stamp this is this is one I did before and I actually brought it into uh, um, uh, into a, another file format we'll get to that so that's where the file should end up. All right, let's go ahead and I'll switch to my other camera and you'll see how this works. Actually, let me uh, compile and build, build, and then I'm gonna run this here when I switch to the other camera. Hope you caught that. Our program stopped. Let's take a look at the file. Uh, here we are. You can see this file was created. And there we are. Uh, you have um, our time, our header row here with the uh, time, comma, signal. And then we have uh, two columns of data separated by a call, uh, comma. And you can see we've got uh, the time column incrementing in uh, increments of 10. And then we've got this, uh, the millivolts starting off at 49.90, so almost 5 volts. And you see it's, it's, it's just touching 5 volts occasionally. And that's, that's correct if we had the potentiometer all, all to one side. And if we scroll down here, you'll see that uh, it changes here. There you go. So you can see this is, this is with, uh, when I was changing the potentiometer, it goes down to almost zero not quite that's the, what we expect to see it goes down to 25 millivolts or maybe 20 millivolts and then it comes back up and that's just what we saw in the video uh, of the uh, actual you know, we saw the LED uh, starting off bright and getting dim and then getting bright again okay so that's, that's our data so what can we do with this uh, let me let me go ahead and close that and uh, if you're running a Raspberry Pi 3 and you've got the latest Raspberry and you have this office up here, and you can actually open up this LibreOffice Calc. And this is kind of like a, um, well, it's, it's, I, I think it's kind of a replacement for uh, Microsoft Excel if you're, you're familiar with that. And so we can use this to kind of uh, plot that data. So we can go ahead and, and open up that, that file that we just created. Oh, there it is, right there at the top. So open that up, and it's pretty straightforward. It, it, it recognizes what it is. It's a, it's a separated by commas. Uh, we're not actually using semicolons, but it doesn't matter. So it's going to show up like this in here. Just hit OK. 
So now we have the, this data in here, uh, we can then, uh, first of all, we need to save as. If we save as, and just the uh, standard format that this uh, LibreOffice document uh, uses, I think it's called OBS, uh, ODS, sorry. I did this once before, use UDS format. And yeah, just save. Okay, so once you have the file in this format, you can go up here, just select this, this row and then hit the chart button. And we're gonna do an XY scatter. And I think, uh, let's see, so go to data series. Uh, we have that. Uh, we want our X values to be in, uh, so we're just gonna copy this here. And our X values is gonna be, uh, we're just gonna change that B to A. And that will give us R. And that should do it. We can we can change some other things too, but so essentially we have this chart now. Whoops. So there we have the data chart, and so you can see that it starts off at 5,000. That's 5,000 millivolts, and we reduce it, and then we bring it back up. And so you could do this with with anything. So maybe you've got a pressure sensor. Or maybe you have a, a position sensor uh, on something that's it's, it's often a potentiometer, um, and, or maybe a strain gauge or something. Uh, in this, and in this case, we have a potentiometer. You know, it could be someone uh, adjusting some uh, uh, control on an input, uh, and then you can you can actually chart that. You can see what it looks like. So that's what we can do with that uh, log data. But that's about it for this video. Uh, so in this video, we just basically created a very simple data logger with Raspberry Pi. You can do a lot of thing, a lot of things to adjust how fast it logs, and you can add additional values. Uh, but uh, hopefully, this is kind of the, the the introduction to that to allow you to to build on it and and do what you need to do for your project. Uh, some th some of the things we have coming up uh, and when we get the time is we're going to create a wrappy a wrapper uh, for our C code for this uh, this uh, eighty five nine nine two. And uh, we're going to wrap that in uh, Python, and that's really so that we can then uh, create use Python to create a GUI. One of the things that Python is is good for is making GUIs. Uh, it's a little easier to use than C, or a lot easier to use than C. And we'll use Tkinter for that, and that will allow us to maybe create a uh, a live strip chart of that value that we were just looking at, so you can actually see how it's changing in real time uh, from a visual perspective. And uh, some other things we'll do is we'll, we'll move away from the Raspberry Pi. And we'll, we'll use this uh, 85592 with the uh SDK uh, 2.0 library. And we'll also do a data logger using the Freedom K64F, which has a built-in uh, SD card slot so we can uh, log data to an SD card. And uh, something that I've, I've been using quite a bit uh, is, uh, is CAN, and I thought maybe it would be good to, to Maybe, maybe present the, that, that protocol and do a tutorial series on using that protocol. It's really great for, for controls. Um, so uh, we'll, we'll talk about that uh, in a future video. Uh, but I hope you like this video. Please subscribe. Uh, like it if you like it. And check back real soon. Thanks.